It's my pleasure to introduce to you this afternoon Barbara Coutinho, who uh, for some time now has been directing the museum known as MUD, uh, M-U-D-E, uh, the Museum of Fashion and Design in Lisbon, which occupies a very strategic building in the city centre, which now, for some time, has been under a phase of renewal. Barbara is a curator, and I think also a compulsive academic. She's kind of done the rounds with the universities, got doctorates, is even thinking of doing a new doctorate, but her key interest is museumology and how it relates to our human experiences. And since the museum kind of combines fashion and design, and possibly a little implication of architecture, I think uh, she has a unique perspective on what a museum can be. Please welcome Barbara Coutinho. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much to all of you that are here. Uh, thank you to Nigel Coates and to the organization to invite me. Um, as Nigel said, I have been, since the beginning of the museum, to be honest, the director and uh, conceiving since the beginning the project, the concept of the, this museum. I was invited by the municipality of Lisbon in 2006 to conceive a new museum dedicated to design, having as a main uh, collection, um, a private collection that, that was recently bought by the municipality. By, I don't know if I'm getting, oh, okay. You hear me from here, isn't it? Okay because I, I like to be more near you, otherwise I'm feeling very... <laughs> um, so, as I was saying, um, I was invited by the municipality to think about, to conceive a new museum that had as a main collection a private one that was recently bought by the municipality. The name of the collection was Francisco Capello Collection. Now, fortunately, um, almost 14 years after, we have plenty other collections uh, we also create much more wider um, a nucleus of design in order to make really one of the goals of our of this project that is to conceive in the center in the heart of Lisbon in the downtown in the Pombalin downtown a very for some for some historians the one of the of the first modern cities of the world with a very uh, close and rationalist uh, uh, architectural project um, but to conceive over there a house for all the expressions of design so we started with a collection of product and and fashion as Nigel also mentioned now we have plus graphic design, contemporary jewelry, um, stage design, costumes. Uh, we are going more and more to the web design also. So it's a continue and to growing and to um, spread more the areas of design. But what I'm going to talk now with you, it's not regarding really this building. It's uh, uh, regarding more our initiatives that we have been developing since the building was closed for renovation. So we opened in 2009 uh, and we closed in 2000. We must close. It was not our decision just, well, let's close it for, for refurbishment. It was really a need because the building was requesting for um, uh, support in the infrastructure in the facilities like air condition, security, etc. So we must close it, otherwise we could not make any other program over there. And it's, it's about that program that we call Mood Outside or Outdoors that I'm going to, to speak in here to share with you our uh, idea 
uh, that I showed you before, the space as an, as an exhibition content. But before we start doing, let me just make a short introduction to the museum itself. This museum, this building that is in the core of Lisbon. This was a, a, a bank, a national and overseas bank in Portuguese, Banco Nacional de Ultramarino. It's a quarter, it's a block um, with eight floors, 15,000 square meters, a place that had a very strong identity in town that have a very also, it's a symbol, it's a symbol of our, um, in terms of our politician evolution, also financial context since the 1930s until nowadays. So that's the building of the museum and that was the interiors when we receive it because the bank was, as among other banks in the world, was bought by another bank in the beginning of the 21st century that decided to make huge renovation interiors. And the, re the, the renovations meant destroy, meant dest destroy the heritage that the building had. So we received the building as it, as, as it was like that. The building, the, the, the building was closed in 2009. Um, in the, kind of uh, question mark regarding what would be the future, because suddenly the municipality and the, also the, the architects uh, pay attention to the, to the problem that it was that the, the, one of the most important buildings um, of one of our pioneers of the modern architecture, that his name is Cristino da Silva, was being destroyed in, in the city. So the, the work stopped uh, and it was, as I say, it was a very a, a big question mark about what should we do regarding this building? Should it be a building for another function? Should, uh, should it be allowed for the bank to continue the transformation that he intends to do? Uh, and the municipality decided to stop it and to decided to think a little bit about what should be the future in order to rehabilitate the center of the city, in order to help restore in terms of social, uh, cultural, economical, financial life in the center. So we opened in 2009, but in 2009, for the Portuguese that are present, so for the foreigners probably will remind, Portugal was one of the pigs. It, with Italy, with Spain, it was one of the countries that were under a very huge crisis, uh, almost arriving Troika with this uh, uh, founding to help the countries um, reshape and, and, and develop from this crisis. So we, we had uh, the municipality as this project had a few money to invest in this building. The building is huge. They had to buy the building. So the, the building, it's now, it's since 2010, a municipal building. It's a heritage of the city, uh, a patrimony of the city, but it didn't have that capacity to reshape the whole, the whole space. So I, I was thinking uh, plenty of time of what should we do? Should we wait for better times? Should we um, study the building? Should we uh, start to make a program inside? And I invite two architects, two young architects, Ricardo Carvalho and Joana Vilhena, to work and to study with me the possibility of making an occupation into the space. Of course, there is already a tradition in this field. If you think about Pala Tokyo, if you think about PS1, you think about these kinds of elements. And it was our path to think about, okay, let's go, let's occupy this building and let's study it like an heritage, like a, a content itself, and let's make with the minimum the maximum possible. So we opened and it was a huge success, I may say. I don't like to talk about my own work like this, but it was really a success in terms of national context and also international, being the front page of several magazines regarding uh, architecture and design, such as Architectural Record. Um, and it was opening like, let's, let's start doing it like a museum in progress. There was two basic ideas in terms of museology that I work with Ricardo and Joana. One, Museum as a work in progress, so let's, let's go by step by step. We open the first floor and then we will go and see how it flows. 
The second idea was to conceive the ruin as our heritage. It's a complex term to, conce to consider ruin in a modern building, because as we all know, there is no concept of that in the modern uh, uh, movement um, with this romanticized uh, 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 ideology involved. But nevertheless, it was really a destroying material. We may say that it's a contemporary ruin. So we received the space a little bit like this. It was a very strong um, and... Um, and to me, when I look at this image now, to be honest, it's like um, it's very emotive because it was very tough to see uh, a whole building in the center of the city like this during a few years. So, but as you as you can see, there is different mo moments in the history of the building that are c combining here. The building start to be ref refurbished and have as the first big project with Tertullian Marx in 20, 1920. The second was already in 1960 with Christine da Silva, uh, and then several others in the 90s and the beginning of the 21st century. But it was like that. Uh, uh, seeing the structure, the, the bones of the building was very clean and very obvious. So it was like this that we started to work with different architects after, uh, going to other, build, to other floors and very fast, because as I said, it's not really the content of my, my talk, but on, I'm, I'm taking the third floor, just an example, because it was all the same philosophy was also present in the other floors that we occupy. Um, we start to organize uh, in this space that it's very similar to this. We call it the autognum or the, the star uh, with this uh, structure of construction of beams and, and pillars. Um, we start to organize special uh, installations that had to, to, to dialogue with the space, not creating any white cube, not covering the space as it was, but to work with the plasticity, with the aesthetic, with, um, with the material, materiality of the space. So one was, very, was one of the first that we work with the foundation, Gulbenkian Foundation, and with the Royal Orchestra of London to uh, organize in, Li in Lisbon um, celebration regarding Igor Stravinsky, the writ of spring. So it was an interactive exhibition that people went and see with big screams uh, the, the, the different um, musicians playing, and they had some elements that could also be a part, be a composer, be an instrument, be inclusively the maestro. The second example is this one, the, the exhibition about graphic design of Manuel Strat, a Spanish designer. And one more time, as you can see, you can start to see the, the center, always in here, the center was the space of a special installations. In here, we invite people to come and to draw, to leave their memories, to leave their drawings, to leave their expression after see the exhibition. The third one was about, was an exhibition of fashion. And we once again kept the space as it was. And we create in here like a, a brain of this designer, fashion designer that we want to show. That is Philippe Oliveira Batista. The other space around that we normally use, maintain the open space with all the materials, as you know, um, as you can see, um, um, really unveiled. Uh, we use this material, this reflection, like a mirror uh, material, and we design different spaces in order to make a kaleidoscope inside this three the third floor. And this kaleidoscope, I like very much to see like, like, like one of the metaphors of our philosophy regarding the space as a content of the exhibition, that was like the space itself was also a content of the, the exhibition itself, inclusively the streets, because we didn't cover the, 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 the windows. So this um, contamination of the street in the surrounding, inside the interior, uh, the fashion that was chosen also um, in themes, uh, and all the in each design of each uh, space, was also related with the content of the of the exhibition itself. And in oh, sorry, and in here we create a high low tech brain uh, to see 
with the, all these screens and the narrow of cables, uh, what could be in going inside the um, imagination, the creation of Filipe Oliveira Batista. And finally, before I go out of the building, I would like also to show you the, this other installation in the same space of Antonio Lagarde, that is a, um, an artist, a man that worked on the theater, opera, ballet for long, uh, making uh, um, sceneries, making costumes. Uh, and in this big exhibition about him, we organized a, a rude uh, a circle of wheelies we do these two tools that he designed for um, a ballet in the national Portuguese company, uh, Giselle, uh, with a mirror of light and water and the floor cover with, with sand. So and the, the visitors go and walk around without any barriers between the objects and the, the public, that it's important to us. So since the beginning, I can say with this, uh, sorry, sorry, that is a mistake over here, it's What's happening? Oh, sorry, it's five ideas. There is a mistake with the numbers. Five main ideas that you can see since the beginning of mood. First of one, give value to the story and identity of the site. In this case, the building of the museum that we have been studying for long in different archives, in different uh, spaces to understand better and better how it was design, how it was built, and why it was built like that. Explore the phenomenological perspective of, of architecture. That I will explain a little bit more, and then, of course, with the talk with Nigel, uh, it's a topic that we can develop. Develop a collaborative and trans transdisciplinary work. I really don't believe so much anymore of this kind of linear and hierarchical work that has been characterized in museums for long. First, the uh, curatorial idea, then comes the architect and specialize that idea, then comes the communication team, then comes the educational team. I think since the beginning, we have to have this collaborative process that from the scratch start to think and to plan about an exhibition that it's much more than the sum of the different elements. So it's an exhibition as a work itself. Because I think it's the, one, of the, um, one of the measures or one of the ways that the museums can be uh, fulfilling nowadays their own mission that we can discuss also what is that mission between so many, many um, constraints and challenges that we face as society. So the trans transdisciplinary work, I think it's very important. And it's since then, the architecture, the design is still and must still since the beginning. So it's create dialogues between the building, the curatorial discourse, and the exhibition design. And to end the fifth that is here with two, but it's a mistake, overcoming the container and content dichotomy. So what is this now, uh, this topic of content and container? I think it must be um, for our uh, work in the museum, really debate. So we close for refurbishing in 2016. We are hoping to reopen next year, in the end of next year. But meanwhile, we didn't stood just inside the building working. We contained and we went outside. And we organized this program of mood outside that we went to not just Lisbon, but also outside of Lisbon. And uh, I want to share with you four sites that we have been um, occupying, working with the, with with their that inst uh, institutions working together, working in team with their institutions in order to think how could the culture and the arts being really becoming more vital for the humankind, for us as a society. That's our main topic, to a a reach, reach people, to touch people, to go to people where, wherever they are and to create a discourse that is simultaneously an ecstatic but it's also an ethic discourse. So it deals with these two, uh, uh, two or more than two levels that is work with the uh, interpretation, but also with, with the experience that some of us, all of us have when we visit physically a space. So I like very much this example 
as a, um, a metaphor one more time for the whole philosophy until now that we have doing. Because it's a small chapel uh, in Elvis, inside the Museum of Contemporary Art. And we, we, were, we were invited to work with them in the next exhibition that should uh, cross or should put in dialogue arts and fashion. And we thought, well, Elvis is a small town in the border between Portugal and Spain. So let's work on that topic of the borders. Let's down uh, with the borders. Let's put the design and art and the environment speaking together uh, about some themes that uh, are common to all of us uh, now and also from the past until now. So you have three objects in here in this installation. The space itself, a Baroque chapel with these blue uh, and white tiles, Portuguese tiles, that tell the story of Saint Elizabeth. Um, and all these, uh, 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 we need to know a little bit about the space, of course, need to know about the narrative that was on the tiles. And that is just after that, that we decided to put in dialogue a piece of Rui Chaves in iron, that deals with the sublime, with the, with the sacred uh, element, like there, like, like a sacred piece. Uh, and, and a piece of Alexander McQueen, uh, a unique piece also, Alexander McQueen, that, that he painted in this um, cloth and dress, a painting of a Flemish uh, painting of the 16th century, that it was a, um, an element of the story of the Virgin that also goes to visit, as we know, Santa Saint Elizabeth. So it was like crossing these multi intercultural references that we like to work until now. It's to put together things and let people experience and interpret um, as they feel and think and know about the history. So four spaces that I would like to, to speak. But before I do it, because I have 80 minutes, the way we normally work is, as I mentioned before, have spaces and combined pieces that had to do, had to see with the, with the, the content of the space. But there is other possibility that is to receive this big um, empty space, um, more or less without so many significance inside, but then activate the space and activate it through color, through uh, light, through, through new circles of, of, of people. And in this case was an, was an exhibition about a very important painter, Fernando Lemos, but his work as a designer. So we did two things. One, he did wrong, and I, want to tell, and I want to share also the wrong part of it. But one strategy worked well. I, I'm going to start by that. One was to paint all the walls, all the windows, sorry, with the uh, um, uh, elements of colors that are normally in the painting and the design of Fernando Lemos, and let, let the building also be a part of that experience of color and light. The other was... Um, the intention of cover all the space with the pigment, with the yellow pigment that Fernando Lemos liked so much. And people were inside and supposedly they walk insi inside or above the, 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 no, not above, on the top of the pigment and start to make a performance on the space. That doesn't work so well. That's why you are seeing a, a photo of the second um, strategy that we had to, to do it because we didn't want to lose that yellow strong uh, element in the, in, the, in the exhibition. So we glue, we cover part of the, of the floor with these yellow circles. But the first idea was this one, was really a very strong pigment, yellow pigment that people would be inside walking around, uh, being also dirty with that yellow, being a part of the exhibition. Um, but as I was saying, for conservation reasons, we had to uh, close the exhibition two days, clean the space and change the, the, the strategy. That's happened sometimes and we need to, to be able to, to solve that problems. So now it's the five sites that I would like to share with you before 
we can ask after make a talk and also answer your questions. Four sites, Convento da Trindade no Chiado, Palácio Pombal no Bairro Alto, both in Lisbon, a Moreira Shopping Center, completely different, Palácio dos Condes da Calheta em, in Belém, also in Lisbon. So normally in this mood outside, I search for places where I find that somehow, by their history, by their morphology, by their site, by, their topo by, by the meaning that they had in the city, they, had, uh, 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 they can be a, co a content for the exhibition that we would like to, to work. So the first case is Convento do, do, da Trindade in Chiado, that it was um, closed without any use at that moment. We would like, we have a topic that we would like to work, that was the, the signs, the public signs in, in Lisbon, the story of these public signs that nowadays they are, didn't exist anymore. We had photographs, we have the studies in the municipality, the drawings, the technical drawings of the several projects of signs um, that were did during the time, and we have also a, a um, private collection of signs. So we enter in this space using mainly um, material of constructions as, to, as materials to present the, 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 the object itself. So I'm going to show you some images of that. People could walk around, see the drawings that was on this uh, almost like a elements of construction that we put to sustain um, the, the, the photographs and the technical drawing, uh, and also dealing with um, the, um, the scale, the relation between the scale of people that somehow uh, are more proximately of something that normally is on the top of the buildings. Uh, and that was very interesting as a reaction, as a perception of, of, of the visitors that they had. So doing a little bit like doing the, the most with the less, not transform the space, because don't forget that we are just occupying temporarily uh, and we are not moving to that space. We are doing normally six months in that site. So it's, it's, a, it's a philosophy that works with the, with the pre-existence, respecting that pre-existence, but putting that pre-existence in dialogue, as I said in the beginning. The other example was in Bairro Alto, Palacio Pombal, a palace of the 18th century, also closed, also waiting for renovation. Um, and we had a very str strong but strange collection that I knew that I would like to work for long. That is a, a collection of tattoo. Tattoo collection from the 1910 to 1940 in the national, that belonged to the National Institute of Legal Medicine and Foreign Science. And we have the drawings, magnificent drawings, that the people that were using that services or the one that died and had to, uh, to, to, to make that obituary. Uh, they, the, all the body was designed in these by the students of the fine arts uh, at that moment in Lisbon in this scheme of the body. Or even we had some fragments of skin tattoo. They have, not, my, not, not I. So we decided to, that we should work on the theme, on this uh, um, tattoo from the point of view of design, because we saw some similarities on the themes, on the way the female and the male uh, tattoo itself. Uh, so we enter in this beautiful, almost Baroque palace, uh, and we create some spaces like this panoply like the Foucault thought about this panoply, creating this, um, uh, not cube, but, but, but solid uh, in the middle of the, of, the, of the room. And inside, people could see the drawings and the, the, um, the, the fragments of skin. Or in the chapel, one more time, we, cre we, ins we, we underline this idea of the chapel putting important images like iconic images and also create this, this idea of a new relic uh, with the, 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 the elements of the, the skin. And of course, invite new uh, young tattoo designers or artists that they are in the surrounding of Bayrouault to come, to be, and to work uh, during the exhibition for people to, to, to know it. 
on the shopping center. We went around the shopping center and we decided not to do differently of the shopping center. The theme of the exhibition was this one, future present, how we could present the design for change, but we wanted to do it with the language of a shopping center. So we want, we want to bring the experience of the museum for the different spaces, but uh, 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 somehow create uh, a dialogue that uh, creates some doubt, surprise people, but also create some doubt, confront them with they are entering shops and then they will see windows shops in the corridors of this, uh, this mall. And it was a success in terms of public. We made several uh, guided tours. Um, as you can see, these this windows was pretty much what a, what a shop window is. Uh, with murals from both sides, but the content itself and the choosing of the pieces was particularly important for passing the message to the visitors that it was not visitors, it was more uh, consumers that walk and uh, enter in the, in, the, in the shopping center to buy mainly. So we, we were questioning them what to buy, why by, uh, but in the same language of, of the commercial area. And the last site, because I already covering my time, um, was in Palacio uh, dos Condes da Calheta. And I'm going to jump to be more, a little bit more fast, because I just want to call your attention to this last example. Um, in 2017, we worked to, to deal and to work with uh, about the Iberian, um, the Iberian design. And we worked to study that in this post-colonialist discourse, to reading it, to analyze it, to, 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 to criticize in terms of the sustainability, in terms of the human uh, uh, terms. And we, 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 I walk through the city and I found out this Palacio dos Condes da Calheta, um, a palace from the 17th century that was also almost closed, but beautiful with um, an archive, their own archive, very strong, with a Shilo technique, Shiloteca, with a place, a, a library of woods. I don't know the technical name, but with uh, animals, with the documents, one more time with the tiles, the Portuguese tiles. So we did three exhibitions, and I'm just going to show you how we did almost without touching nothing. We maintained the, the, the pre-existence objects that they were, like this library of wood, very important from the, the end of the 19th century forward. And we put in dialogue, create dialogues with pieces from the contemporary times that discuss the use of water, the use of new materials, uh, the type of sustainability, uh, the work of designers and artisans or craftsmen. And we were doing it and doing it uh, in order for people to walk and to uh, be confront with the space, but also to see and to understand the importance of the palace itself. Um, and we do, did it with different architects, with different teams. There was three exhibitions. The first was the, the so-called New World. The second, Brazil Today. And so someone could see the new chairs of, that are made by the designers in Brazil, but also turn around and see what the Portuguese did with most of the time with the Brazilians' uh, woods that came from, from the colonies um, our ex-colonies since the, the 17th century. So, and see that we normally use very simple solutions, like curtains, like, uh, in this case, plant, creating a new environment that had plenty to do with Brazil and Portugal, and with the topics in the tiles. And other example, it's still with so much sea, that was a third exhibition. And you can see by the movement of the, the, the visitors that they look, so, they look similar to the piece than to the place itself. And that was really our intention. Our intentionality was to put people looking also at the architecture, to feel the architecture, the historian architecture, and this debating why, why there is, and I'm, also, I'm finishing now, why we continue to build new buildings um, but forgetting others 
that are sometimes closed with no use, um, wasting a, a, a very important and symbolical memory. Uh, and that is our purpose as a museum regarding the architecture. Work with the new, but also work with the pre-existing architecture, putting in dialogue and creating reasons to debate with young creators nowadays to debate all this. And uh, I show you just this topic. This is also an exhibition made in, um, in order to, in the exhibition of Brazil, um, in the palace that I present you in the first space. So that's my conclusion, almost five minutes more. Uh, and I hope to see you one more time in mood next time in 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Gosh, what brilliant Sorry. exhibitions. No. And it's, uh, it's a privilege to see them so rapidly because I feel as though I've been there. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not kind of quiet, are they? They're not, no. <laughs> they're not shrinking academic possibilities. They're kind of, they are, they're, they're hitting in a certain respect, like the, the beautiful neon sign. So that acted as a kind of an act of cultural archeology span on a city that had only recently disappeared. I guess my first question to you is, um, will it be a bit boring going back to the old museum? No, no. <laughs> uh, going back to the old building, you are saying? Yes. No, it's not be, it will not be boring because um, we will contain these... these uh, we are doing it. Uh, the, the architectonical and the museological project is pretty much what you are seeing in here. So it's infrastructure but maintaining that aesthetic and give in each exhibition the possibility of the temporary architecture become more alive but the content itself must be um, always always considered as an actor as a protagonist well in each one of the exhibitions you showed there was a very uh uh you were you were creating a very stark uh, but effective dialogue between the exhibits and the place. You know, whether you shifted the colour or you worked with existing collection, as in the last one with the, with the collection of woods, this sort of quintessentially colonial collection yes. that uh, against which you could ask about a real understanding of what what kind of rape and pillage was going on compared with what could be drawn in a much more contemporary way. Yes, For precisely. The, the, the strategy of occupying the space, it's not always the same. The basis is the same. To study, to recognize it, to uh, consider it. Um, consider it as a, a human value an aesthetic value um, and uh, the materiality that he had. That's what, the, the basic. the place? The place. Okay. The place. But then the way we work with that, depending on the place itself and on the content that we, um, that we want to show, of course. Can I ask you about the thorny question of, of visitor numbers? And I mean, m many museums and the Design Museum in London is, an, is a case in point, is pressured, feels pressured to have uh, uh, blockbuster exhibitions that bring in the crowds. And I think fashion is one of the exhibitions, the V&A's most visited exhibitions are on, on Alexander McQueen. Yes. And uh, Amazing Dior and uh, also on in pop icons David like Bowie. David Bowie. So, um, I'm wondering, because you seem to be very principled about the way you approach museology and the and the 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 protagonist of the curator as a kind of provocateur. I'm just wondering if you will ever be persuaded to have blockbusters. Depending on the blockbuster, I think each museum. Well, I think museums. As, a, as an institution, 
we we have in we have in common the, uh, probably the same uh, challenges and some mission that we had to 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 fulfill a uh, political mission i think i think nowadays more and more the the museums of design and not just of design can be like a place to maintain the citizenship and the democracy because we are inside the museum when you look at the pieces from the past from the recent past from the contemporary we can meet the other we can, we are more empathy by the other so i think that's a very important thing for our days for the museum so there's a kind of cultural agora a kind of place yes, where absolutely. where where cultures can be um, a place of meeting encounter debating and transcendence and in the case of mood because of course vna had beautiful exhibitions but in the case of mood don't forget the portuguese context portugal had to wait until the 21st century to have a museum dedicated to design we didn't well, have it had any. to wait to get rid of the right wing junta from okay. <laughs> until the early 70s. Yes, yeah, so but it we was, did we, it we was have a, a museum itself. <laughs> yes, exactly. But <laughs> consider that we have a mission uh, to um in my opinion to work and to help build our own history and critic thinkers. So Yes. We had a if, lot of catching up to do. Yes, yeah, so if we want, of course, if we could collaborate and having in here a blockbuster, we will have it for but sure. But that's not the most the driving force. But that's force. not the most thing. I think it's not. I think you, I've got the feeling that you're one of those people who will actually go ahead and do it and be able to argue the case for a perhaps quite niche exhibition that is, you know, not yeah. not broad spectrum. Bring in the crowds. Yeah. Um, and all depend also from the way you communicate the exhibitions. One of our biggest success was in the vault, the museum, the building, that building that it had time to show you the whole, of course. But we have a vault because it was a bank. We have a vault, and we opened that vault with an exhibition. Guess of what? Money. No, <laughs> of seeds. 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 One five hundred different seeds. Of lettuce, of uh, beans, of of uh, of seeds uh, from our um, culture, food culture uh, of Portugal and Spain, and it was a success. And why seeds? Because seeds was the initially was the money, was the way of changing things, was through seeds. And seeds nowadays it's also a topic. How could be? How would be our our um, food in the future? Do the food be enough for all? Should we redesign yeah, lots that? Lots of questions. I think food, but food is important as water, as a form of culture for the future. Yeah. I think our time is up, Barbara. Yes, I know. But I, know. I, know. I do want to thank you hugely for no, I bringing you. up conversations that are very much about the city where this event is taking place. Yes. Of course, not here in this building, which is relatively neutral. Oh. But you've shown how a building is not neutral how the building talks yeah. and sets up the dialogue for wonderfully exciting museum experiences thank you so thank much thank you very much thank you thank you <laughs>